Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss minerals and vitamins. These are micronutrients when we look at the nutrient profiles in dairy rations. Macrominerals are those that are fed at rates of grams per cow per day. So they are fed at much higher levels than other micronutrients we'll discuss a bit later. We measure these and express them in the ration as a percent of the dry matter. For example, 0.8% calcium in the total ration dry matter would be a typical number for a high producing dairy cow. There are a number of common macro minerals that are added to and balanced for in dairy rations, which include sodium expressed as capital NA, chlorine or chloride expressed as CL, calcium expressed as CA, phosphorus as P, magnesium as MG, and potassium as K. Some of these letters look unusual because of their Latin derivatives, and we will be using these abbreviations in many of the modules later on in this course. Let's discuss each of the macro minerals rather quickly to give you a quick feel of their biological importance. Calcium, as we all know, are critical for bone and teeth formation. It's also important in blood clotting process in the body and for smooth muscle contraction. This is one reason why if blood calcium are low, cows do not clean as quickly and have, may have lower dry matter intakes, also known as hypocalcemia. A clinical deficiency of calcium would be milk fever. We usually increase the calcium levels in a diet when we feed higher levels of fats and oils, and the availability in feeds will vary with forages being low and inorganic sources such as dicalcium phosphate or limestone as fairly high. Phosphorus is a very controversial macro mineral because of its effects on environment. However, in the dairy cow, it is important for bone and teeth formation and critical for energy transformations used in a lot of different energy calculations. The classic clinical deficiency would be rickets, which is a bone deformation, and animals can have bone deformities. It has a very important role in reproductive performance. And historically, we've raised phosphorus levels higher and higher to try to achieve higher reproductive performance. However, with today's environmental regulations, we are now lowering phosphorus requirements because of the high levels in soil and in groundwater. Another sign of a deficiency would be cows eating soil or depraved appetite, such as chewing on fence posts or other wooden objects or other items in the feedlot and may be expressed by the animal. Sodium and chloride minerals will be discussed together. Generally, the deficiency sign of sodium and chloride is abnormal eating behavior, very similar to phosphorus deficiency in some respects. Another sign is licking of the urine because of the high levels of sodium and chloride that is excreted in urine and may be a sign of a deficiency in dairy cattle. Also, another sign of a shortage of sodium and chlorine would be a low dry matter intake However, this is a common characteristic for many other problems on the dairy farm. Remember, there is no salt deficiency. Salt is not a mineral. It is consisted of sodium and chloride, and we balance for each of these minerals and nutrients independently. Cattle will consume free choice sodium and chloride if they are deficient. They have a true ability to sense when they are short of these key nutrients. Sodium bicarbonate is an excellent source of sodium and is used as a rumen buffer. So when farmers include buffer into the diet, sodium levels can increase, but chloride levels will not. So really watch this relationship here. Under heat stress, higher levels of both sodium and chlorine are warranted. Potassium is another important element in the feeding program because of its extreme high content found in milk. Its biological role in dairy cattle is to control osmotic pressure within and outside of cells and impacts acid-base balance in the dairy cow and also has a role in nerve transmission. Higher levels of potassium in transition cow diets can lead to low blood calcium and cause milk fever and other metabolic disorders. We also know potassium needs to be fed at higher levels under heat stress because of its excretion under those conditions. Magnesium, another macro mineral, is primarily used for enzyme activation and for muscle contraction. Therefore, one of the classic deficiency symptoms is grass tetany, or hyperirritability, 
of muscles and muscle tremors. Higher levels of magnesium are needed when we feed fats and oils because they are tied up and the ability to regulate magnesium is primarily through absorption and entry into the bloodstream. There is not a great deal of magnesium reserve as found in calcium and phosphorus. Sulfur, another major mineral nutrient, is needed for sulfur-containing amino acids, such as methionine and cysteine. Also, it's important for acid-base regulation and critical for fiber-adjusting bacteria. The key way to evaluate sulfur in the diet is to obtain an optimal ratio of nitrogen to sulfur, 10 to 12 parts nitrogen for each one part sulfur. Another way to look at optimal amounts of sulfur in the ration is to look at the ratio of nitrogen to sulfur. Ideally, we want 10 to 12 parts nitrogen to each one part sulfur for optimal microbial synthesis. For example, 3% nitrogen to 0.3% sulfur. Now remember, we multiply the nitrogen by 6.25 to make it a protein equivalent, which is how we normally look at nitrogen status in a diet. Another part of the nutrients in minerals would be the microminerals or the micronutrients. These are added to the ration in terms of levels of milligrams per cow per day. For example, 6 milligrams of added selenium. We measure and express this in the ration as parts per million. And in some micro or trace minerals, which they are also referred to, we measure them in terms of parts per billion. The common micro or trace minerals included in dairy rations and balanced for are copper, abbreviated CU, cobalt, CO, iodine, abbreviated capital I, iron, FE, manganese, capital MN, selenium, SE, and zinc, ZN. We will not discover each of the trace minerals in this module here, but you can look these up in various books and references. They are primarily used for a lot of energy transformations, immune system development, and cow health. However, another aspect to consider is mineral delivery. And delivering minerals, there are about three ways to deliver minerals. The most common and recommended way is force-fed or force-feeding the mineral to the cow, which means we determine how many grams of a mineral or milligrams of a trace mineral the cow needs, and we actually put it in the diet. The three most common ways to force-feed minerals would be, one, to mix it in a total mix ration, or TMRs. Secondly, to mix it with the grain mixture, or mix it with the forage, in other words, one of the subcomponents of the ration that the cow consumes, or individually top dress it to the cow. This is the most economical way to do it, so we give the exact minerals to the individual cow based on her need and her requirement. However, the cow must be in a stanchion or confinement situation to allow for this system to occur. A second choice is to, a way to do it is free choice. Free choice simply depends on the animal's ability to sense when she or he is short on a given mineral. The only true appetite mineral would be sodium and chloride or salt. The research would indicate the other ones are based on its texture, its palatability, its availability, or craving of the animal. Therefore, the best system is to force feed the recommended amounts. A third way is to inject mineral, and the most common one today would be selenium. We have commercial products on the market that has injectable selenium and sometimes added vitamins. And you can inject this into cows at exact times when this demand would be increased, for example, during calving or during the breeding period. Another way to evaluate minerals is how they are bound or chemically put together. Inorganic minerals are bound mineral to mineral, such as sodium chloride, zinc sulfate. These are known as inorganic minerals and are the most economical ones to purchase. Organic minerals are those minerals that are bound mineral to an organic molecule. And the most common sources would be amino acids, proteins, or sugars or carbohydrates. One of the most common ones in the dairy sector would be zinc methionine. One molecule of zinc to one molecule of methionine. Organic minerals are 5 to 15 times more expensive than inorganics, 
but are being used on dairy farms because they may improve cow health or reproductive performance as it relates to its ability to be more highly absorbed and or reach key target issues to meet mineral requirements to stimulate those tissues. Vitamins is another micronutrient. We look at vitamins. There are two categories of vitamins out there. One is fat-soluble. The other one would be water-soluble. The fat-soluble vitamins are added to the ration in terms of international units per day, or IUs. The three most common supplemented vitamins would be vitamin A, which is primarily to improve the surface lining of the animal, such things as skin, uterus, and mammary gland. Vitamin D, also known as the fat-soluble vitamin, improves calcium and phosphorus absorption and utilization, also known as the anti-rickets vitamin. And vitamin E, primarily an antioxidant and really complements the role of selenium in terms of animal health and reproductive performance. Higher levels of fat sometimes can improve the absorption of these fat-soluble vitamins. Water-soluble vitamins are normally fed in terms of milligrams per cow per day. Generally, it was considered that all of these were made at adequate levels by the rumen microbes. However, as milk production has increased, we now see supplementation of some of the water-soluble vitamins to improve performance. Biotin is a relatively new B vitamin to improve foot health. Niacin, or also known as vitamin B3, can lower ketosis and improve energy transfer in the animal. Thiamine is another B vitamin that may be needed when sulfuric acid is added to certain treated feeds, such as corn gluten feed, which causes destruction of the thiamine in the feed. So this is a fairly sp uh, specific B vitamin used in diet supplementation. And B12, which is produced by the rumen microbes and require cobalt to achieve this. The research would say that B12 is not required by high-producing cows if their cobalt requirement is being met. Vitamins can be delivered to the cow, three, or dairy cattle three different ways. The most common, again, will be through the feed, being mixed into the TMR, grain-mixed, or top-dressed. The second one is to inject, and this is particularly popular to those cows that have higher requirements, such as dry cow and transition cows, or in diets where we think absorption would be reduced for some reason. Injecting a cow avoids the need to absorb it because it already is in the tissue of the cow herself. Another way is to add it to the water. Very popular to those cows under pasture conditions or where we cannot restrict the animal to inject it or we don't feed supplemental feeds. And then these vitamins are made water-soluble, usually with some type of coating, especially the fat-soluble vitamins, so the animal can consume this nutrient while she's drinking water. This completes our module on mineral and vitamins. Thanks and have a good day.